Welcome everybody to Strangest Species episode 43, we think. We're pretty sure. We're pretty sure. Yeah. We'll go with 43. Sounds like a good idea to me. Alrighty. Alright. I am your host, Mike Davis, here with your co-host, the one and only... Uh, Ethne Davis. Yes. Woo! That is still your name. <laughs> still me. And I'm still here. Well, cool. Thanks for being here. Mm-hmm. And thanks all of you for being here, too. Absolutely. We couldn't really do it. I mean, we could do it without them, but it wouldn't be the same. It definitely helps having people listen. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> So, My, a minor detail to a, a podcast. Um, if you're watching on the YouTubes, hello, welcome. If you're listening on the podcast version only, please go over to YouTube and give us a, a thumbs up and say hello. And you can see this is the first time that I'm not in a hoodie because the weather's beautiful. But he does have his really cool hat on. I have many really cool hats. But I mean, this one's <laughs> it's awesome. Like, I have a collection of hats. But this little quite... strap, this little strappy thing just is my favorite part. It's a golden rope. Yep. It's great. Yeah, I like it. So, what's going on? Um just a lot of spring in the air. Yeah, it's been really, really warm. It's been great. Yeah. It's beautiful. Turn the sprinklers on today. Yeah, that's good stuff. That's a good sign, you guys. It is a great sign mm -hmm. of a lot of yard work coming up. So, they're going to run tonight? No, they're not on on. Oh, you were just testing them. Yeah. The water is now in the lines. Oh, I kind of want them on on. Huh? <laughs> we were just testing them today. Gotcha. Yeah, but they are working good. Well, that's great. Normally, in the spring, I have to fix like three or four. There's usually a Maybe one or two that's broken or shooting the wrong direction, but they were all looked great. So I'll take it. You had your little sidekick helping you out there? I had our youngest with us. He was my checker. Yeah, your checker. He would run. Some of the some of the sprinklers are a long ways away oh, from yeah. the box. Yeah, they are. And so he would run down. And check them all. And check and make sure they our were Our kitties out. do not like the sprinklers. Not when they pop up all of a sudden when yeah. they are sunbathing. They did not find those very appealing. <laughs> yeah, that was their first time ever seeing them. So. Yeah, they're cute. So... Alrighty. All right. What are we going to talk about today? We are going to talk about. Um, I have no idea. That's right. Fossils. Fossils. That's a good guess. Fossils. Mm, no. No. No fossils today. Okay. I was just thinking of fossils because our nephew was just here and he loves dinosaurs. I mean, he loves them. And he had just gone to the Tyrell Museum. Did you go recently? Well, not long ago. Like within the last couple months. Oh, that's cool. And he got to see like a full, you know, Tyrannosaurus Rex fossil. And then stand by the head of, I guess he's told me a hundred times, I cannot remember any of their names. The head of some dinosaur. I remember him telling us at dinner time about yeah. it. But um, he has this cute little lisp. And he, I mean, dinosaur names are crazy. I don't know why they have to be crazy, but they are crazy. And so no matter what, it was just like, okay. So that's why I thought of fossils. Yeah. But like I said, that's a great guess, <laughs> but it is not at all correct. Okay. Well, that's okay. You're so for the me. new people out there listening, Ethne never knows what we're going to talk about until I tell her what we're going to talk about. And then she's along for the ride with all of you. It's the truth. Yeah. So, um, do you like magic? Ooh, that's a tricky one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know me and magic. I do know. That's why I posed the question. <laughs> um, it kind of irritates me. Like, I, I'm so fascinated and I love it, but I'm like, how did they do this? I'm it drives just, you insane at the same time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not just strictly there. Like, I can just watch it and not really think about it. I'm like, a, okay, this is amazing. I don't know how they're, s like tricking me right now i know they're tricking me i can't figure out how and so it just gets to me especially if they're good like the ones at silver look yeah good. so we have an amusement park uh, like 45 minutes away from our house mm -hmm. and it's it's legit it's a good amusement park oh for, i mean the magic show sorry the magic show is amazing yeah the amusement park there's like what six roller coasters yeah so I mean, it's it's real 
But it's not like a Six Flags or it's Disneyland. Real. It's real. But it's not like a carnival. No, no. I mean, it has like a water park. It's great. It's yeah, perfect. It awesome. I'm glad we live as close as we do. We usually get seasons passes and it's awesome. But, but they're they have ma yeah. a magician there who is just he's great phenomenal he's won i think he's won awards. multiple world championships yeah in magic if that's a thing i guess i mean he says different things i guess i don't even know but his <laughs> shows he does three shows a day out there he, they're very personable very good very very good yeah and they drive ebony insane mm -hmm. but i love them still at the same time it's not like a hate it's a Mm, this is crazy. How do yeah. they do this? Like, I can't handle it. Yeah, it's kind of like when we watch a scary movie. Ugh. The whole time you're like, Mike, Mike, Mike. How do you do that, Mike? What's, what's happening? happening? Yeah. What's happening? <laughs> no, this is a little bit different. It is different. Because the scariness is like, ugh, I hate this. There's no like, ugh, I don't like this. No, no, it's just the nonstop talking both times. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Did you see that, Mike? Did you see that? How do you do that? What's happening? <laughs> well, that's because half the time my eyes are closed. Because <laughs> I don't like scary well, movies. scary movies. I'm just talking about the magician. Oh, with the magician, yeah. I'm like, how is he doing that? Seriously. Because I want him to explain it to me, you know. They're really, really good. Or he's really, really good. So, if you can hear Anthony drinking her water. She's okay. drinking her water. Sorry. <laughs> I think all the pollen... I can hear it in my headphones. So. <clears throat> oh, all the raking of leaves and stuff today is like... Kind of just in the air <clears throat> and in my throat. I feel it as well. So anyway. So today we're going to talk a little bit about one of the world's greatest magicians. But we're not really going to talk about magic. Siegfried and Roy. Nope. Sick, Siegfried and Roy. Yes. Yeah. I ne think. Neither one of them. Nope. We're going to talk a little bit about Harry Houdini. Oh, Houdini. Houdini. Who He's started the one that just like lock in a box yep. and like gets out of the box. Yep. Okay. So he started as a magi as a, not a musician, a magician, mm -hmm. uh, and later transformed more into an escape artist. Okay. And now he's more known historically for his Escaping. amazing feats of escape. Yeah. Gotcha. But he was a trained magician. He started as a magician, and we're we're gonna talk a little bit about Houdini, but he's not our main focus okay and so we're gonna kind of weave in and out the person we're going to talk about today her life was intricately involved with houdini's life the original houdini yeah or is there only one just yeah there's just okay one. just the one so um houdini was a big fighter against the spiritual movement that was super popular um, in his lifetime. Okay. Now, when I say spiritual movement, I'm not talking about religion. It was an actual uh, craze, movement, fad, whatever you want to call it, that swept the nation, that was super big into seances, talking with the dead, all of those kind of things. The kind of things that we watch in our horror movies now, a lot of it came out of spiritualism in the 1800s. Okay. So that would be considered spiritualism? That's what it was called, yeah. Interesting. So it was big in the mid-1800s. Okay. Kind of died down and then became really popular again uh, in World War I because okay. so many people had loved ones who died mm -hmm. that it was kind of fresh again, this... Spiritualism. Everyone was grieving kind of together, yeah. And so it became popular to find ways to reach out and communicate with the dead. Gotcha. So... A big part of spiritualism was seances. Okay. That was kind of the main, the main thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so a typical seance would involve a group of individuals. Okay. That would sit around a table, usually in a dark room. With a Ouija board. I don't know how frequent. That's a good question, actually. I don't, I mean, I don't think really know, Ouija but... boards were really part of it, because Ouija boards, I do believe... Are pretty new. Yeah, were a board game... That was invented. At least that specific name. I'm sure there was some kind of simple similar, some version before yeah, that of a similar thing. Um, but the seances would often have most of them would have a medium. 
who claimed that they could speak to the dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And channel the dead. And so you would have these, I mean, exactly what you would think a seance looks like. They'd have this medium, everyone would hold hands, sit around a table in a dark room, mm -hmm. and they would conjure. Don't forget the candles. Probably a lot of candles. Yeah. Actually, a lot of them were like pitch black or like almost pitch black. Oh, that's terrifying. Yeah. Oof. Well, you can't do your tricks if it's not pitch black. Oh, <laughs> yes, of course. The tricks are the most important part. So none of it's real, guys. In the I'm seance? not saying that. Oh, you're not saying that. But I'm saying there, were, there was a lot of that. I'm not oh. saying all of it was that. I see. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah. Um, but the mediums, like I said, were the central figures in all of this. And they could talk to deceased loved ones. Supposedly. 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 So are, are these... Okay, is the person we're talking about, is she a medium? No. No. Okay. No. That took a twist. We're just, we're setting a background for where our story okay. takes place. Okay. It's not even a story. It's like many stories. This one's a little more ethereal Ooh. than a lot of I, our... Yes, is this ethereal movement? Yes. Okay. That's, this is sign language for ethereal. Because <laughs> you know. Yeah, because I know okay. nothing about sign language. <laughs> we should ask uh, our daughter... She loves it. She does. She yeah, probably knows like seven things. Well, she probably doesn't know ethereal. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> she probably doesn't know what ethereal means. Is the word. In English? Yeah. I think she does. And she's we'll, smart. We'll find out. We'll ask her. No, I think she will. She's watching Insidious right now. Yes, she is. Mm -hmm. Because tomorrow's her birthday. And we watched Insidious, what, like a week ago? Her and I. Not me. And now she wants to watch Insidious 2 tomorrow night on her birthday. We're going to watch all five. Not tomorrow night. There are five of them? Yeah. That's terrible. So her and her girlfriend are down there right now watching. Yep. Insidious 1. In preparation. In preparation for, for Insidious two. 2. Tomorrow. Well, I decide if I can tough it up. And our next-door neighbor girl who she's watching it with also does not like scary movies. And when I went down there, she's like, I don't know why I'm watching this. She does it better than me, though. <laughs> she really does. <laughs> so uh, during these seances cool things would happen. You'd have table rapping. Like that. Tapping? Yeah. It but was... because it was special, it was rapping. Oh. It was kind of like a hip-hop version. Uh-huh. I don't know why they call it rapping. No, I know what you mean. But that's I'm what it was. So the spirits would communicate through rapping. Through rapping. You'd okay. be like, uh, dead great uncle, if you're here, knock twice. Things like that. Mm. Only I, they wouldn't knock. I mean, I'm knocking right now, obviously. Of course not. But underneath the table. Somewhere. I don't know. The medium would go. Something like that. Yeah. yeah, totally. Ghost who lives in our house. Knock once if you're hungry. You know, those kind of things. But they obviously wouldn't see you doing it. No. I mean, maybe they didn't do it. I'm not saying they were all frauds, except most of them were probably frauds. <laughs> okay. All right. Remember the Philip experiment? The one we did in October, when they tried to conjure up a ghost? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. I remember this. Anyways, there was also sometimes automatic writing, where the medium would write messages from the spirit. <laughs> that was in Insidious. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like Haunted Mansion... In Disneyland? Yeah. Would have something. Something in Haunted Mansion would be in one of these moments yeah i mean all of the pop culture of our like scary Madame movies Medusa's today head or whatever the girl's head in the thing and floating um, what's her name yeah not medusa i know but uh madam um leota leota yeah her i feel oh, like this, that's got to be in a seance that's something about that. yeah so but yeah a lot of that our modern pop culture comes from <laughs> this is right up your alley. yeah it is yeah okay um or you have spirit voices that would emanate from the medium so like the ghost, like a ventriloquist, potentially. <laughs> you or you could just be like this. Fake. Like right now, I could be like, "I am Charles, the ghost who lives in your attic, and I want you to get me a sub sandwich." What? I don't think ghosts can eat. Why do they always want food? I don't know. Maybe I'm hungry. <laughs> I think you are. <laughs> oh my gosh. So it's those kind of things. Okay. Um, surprisingly, they were met with a fair amount of skepticism. And critics. This is shocking. If there was a Twitter back then, it would have been a lot of... It would have been a quite a diversive uh, 
opinionated matter. Opinionated matter, matter. Yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was also big business. So in... Uh, so with as much skepticism as there would be, there was mm. still enough intrigue for people to want to be willing to try it or spend the money. For sure. Maybe they were just And maybe there's some people desperate. were just... Some people were probably desperate. Some people were maybe just curious. Yeah. It was just fun if you had the money, you know, to go and see these parlor tricks. Quote, air quote, tricks, you know. Um, but yeah, 1932, about 30 million people a year in the United States were going to Seeking, seances. Oh, wow. And That's a lot. They were spending uh, about $125 million a year, which equivalent is about $2.15 billion. So it was a big industry. If you were good at knocking under the table where no one could see you, you could make some serious cash. <laughs> oh, geez. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we're not offending anybody out there. <laughs> if you're a medium, I hope you're real. That's all I got to say. Sure. That's, yes. Not Are there mediums today? Well, there's definitely like psychics and stuff. Okay. I'm sure there's people who claim it. Yeah, there's also just shows on like TLC, like Miami Medium. I don't know if that's a real show, but something like that. And I don't watch any TV, so I this believe you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Houdini's mom died, and he was really, really grieving. And so he went to a medium, because that's what you did, to try to communicate with her. And he, being Houdini, a magician slash escape artist, was able to tell really fast, like, oh, I can tell what you're doing because I'm a way better magician than you. Because I'm one of you. But yeah. did they know that he was who he was? I don't know. Because I Probably kind of initially. feel like if I had, if I was a medium and I had like Houdini show up, I'd be like, I'm sorry, I'm all picked up. Yeah. I just can't see you. <laughs> like, I'm sick today. <laughs> I'm sick every day that you want to come exactly. see me. <laughs> so I, so I don't know. This enraged him. And it enraged him even more that these people were essentially charlatans taking advantage of people. Sure. In their grief. That's and what so I was And so while thinking. he was like an amazing escape artist, he essentially dedicated his life to um, exposing fraud mediums. It was like his favorite pastime. Interesting. Like he would actually do his professional shows. Part of it would be exposing local mediums. mediums. And I kind of think... It's not ironic um, that it's him, but in some ways it is. I mean, when you go to a magic show, you are there to be entertained. And you know that what they are doing is fake. It's not fake. That guy totally levitates that chick. Okay. I mean, she is levitating. I, how? I don't know. But we're not going to go the there. ring around her. I know. I know. I'm and he flies off himself. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I've sat on the front row. The only part... Him flying up it's to the magic. How man. does he go with the hoop around her? I'm sure if we YouTube, we could figure it out in three seconds. Okay, well. But it's really fun to watch, and when you don't know, you just pretend. Anyway. And it's awesome. Okay, just. Sorry, go back. You're to distracting my brain. Sorry. So. Okay, when you go to a magic show, you know you are there for entertainment purposes. If you're seeking a medium, again, it is kind of like robbing from someone like taking advantage of sure. someone in their grief and it's kind of terrible yeah you know because i think they're seeking for any sort of comfort or answers and not maybe thinking uh with all the aspects of your you know when you go through yeah, grief sure there's so many steps right so you're kind of taking advantage of people in a very vulnerable situation and i can see where he's coming from i mean i kind of agree with him oh totally you know but, but they wouldn't be there if it wasn't a thing that people were seeking. And either. it was a very, Yeah, very like you were saying, a big thing. business. So I kind of like that he did that. I didn't know this. Yeah. So even, like, President Lincoln held seances in the White House when his son died. I mean, it was a very just kind of, it wasn't that common, but it was very common. Compared to today, at least. Interesting. So, um, so now we're going to go to kind of shift our focus to our main character for today. Okay. A gal by the name of Rose Mackenberg. Rose Mackenberg. Now, Rose was born in July 1892 
in good old Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn. It'd be better if it was Mackenberger. Well, that would be, but it's not. <laughs> I don't it's know why just that just came to my brain. <laughs> okay. And uh, she worked, and this is an interesting, I, I, I never found this out, but I'd be curious. So she worked as an investigator in New York City, which seems to me like a really odd thing in the 1920s for a female to be an investigator yeah. in New York City. Like, yeah. That just in seems like... I thought you said we were into 1935 or something, or 32. Um, did we talk about... Oh, I was just saying in 1932. It was like a $2 oh, billion dollar this industry. this was the industry, but right. we're not in that time We're not period. there yet. Sorry, I got you. Sorry. Um, so this is in the early 1920s. Got you. She's working as an investigator in New York. That's good for her. Yeah, she's a young woman. Yeah. Um, and she gets hired by a banker to investigate some stuff. Because he has suffered a bunch of losses on investments after listening to a psychic medium. Shocking. And so he hires her to help figure out what happened. Okay. So <clears throat> she doesn't know anything about this stuff. So she somehow gets a hold of Harry Houdini and says, hey, can you help me on this case? And he says, I love doing this junk. <laughs> so... He comes on, he helps her, but in this process, he is so impressed with her that he offers her a full-time job. Doing what, exactly? Being his lead investigator. On what, exactly? So that's the cool thing. Okay, on exposing mediums? Yep. Oh. So he hires her, and he teaches her all the tricks. Oh. He teaches her. Because that's, like, not a thing that magicians do. Right. And I'm not sure he doesn't teach her his tricks for like his Oh, he's teaching her the medium's tricks. Correct. Gotcha. So he's teaching her, I want you to go to seances. Oh, and pretend. And pretend to be whatever. Seeking out someone. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you're going to figure out what they're doing and oh, how gosh. they're doing it. Okay. This sounds now, awesome. At one time, Houdini had a team of over 20 investigators. Okay. That he would... That he paid and but she was the head investigator that's a lot of investigators to have in your pocket yeah yeah i mean he was a big wig he must have done like, really well very for himself. wealthy yeah did he have a family yeah oh, he was okay. married okay i don't know if he had any kids or not but he was definitely married he was very enthralled to his wife and his mom and oh uh, yeah. yeah that was probably very hard for him when his mom passed away and so she learns the tricks and she becomes this fake medium expert. And she becomes like, her job is making up characters and dressing up and going to those mediums, kind of touring the country. That'd be really fun. So what Houdini would do is, let's say he was going to Cleveland in a month. He would send her a couple weeks ahead. They'd pick out whatever mediums they were going to expose. She would make up some alter ego she would go in do her thing write copious notes we were not in the seance but obviously you know, yeah. she'd figure out what was going on mm -hmm. send it all to houdini and then when he would get there for the shows for the shows he would do his shows but as part of those shows he would actually call out the mediums and say hey so and so is a fake and this is the crap he's doing and he would show them what how they worked I feel like there's got to be like some sort of faux pas law about that or something like you can't do that. I don't even know if that's a thing, but I just feel like he's stepping on some sort of. Yeah, it'd be like going to a magician show and then a week later, another magician showing up saying like, here's all the tricks that magician yeah, did. For like, you. I feel like it's like a industry. Well, it would be definitely in the magic world. Right. But I don't know. It still just seems <laughs> so mean. But kind of great, but mean, kind of. I don't know. Yeah. Like, he's going to get himself in trouble, maybe. Well, people definitely didn't like him. Well, all people or just Well, mediums? no. Like, a lot of, like, many of his shows would turn into, like, fights with his investigators <laughs> and the mediums, you know. Really? Like, yeah. Oh. Because it's their livelihood. They're making tons of money. So why wouldn't he just decide, like, hey, this isn't worth it? I'm getting. he hated it. I mean, and he was doing a good thing, right? I mean, I, yes, he was. 
Yeah. He's also maybe tainting his... Well, I don't think so. I think the general audience, I don't think, held it against him at all. Okay, well, that's good. Okay. So, like I said, Rose is awesome. Uh, she quickly became his top investigator. And she would come up with all sorts of backstories, characters, right, right. outfits. Um, sometime, her main persona was a sad widow, obviously. But sometimes she would... Uh, and it's funny, you can go look up pictures... And there's all these pictures of her in like her different outfits. Outfits. That's cool. So like one of them, she was an upscale spinster. Ooh. Uh, sometimes she played an uneducated farmhand. Mm. Sometimes she played just a country bumpkin. Sometimes she played a normal Middle housewife. Yeah. Uh, you know, so there's all sorts of things. She even had fun with her names oh, I'm that sure. she would make up. One of her favorites she would use was Francis Rod, R A U D. Our Why do you think she would use the name Francis Rod? Because Francis starts with an F and last name is Rod for Rod. Yeah, Rod. Good job. You're so smart. So smart. <laughs> the other, another one she really liked is Alicia Bunk. Like bunking the... Mm -hmm. but so I... if you slow down Alicia, it's like all is bunk. Oh, oh, all is bunk. a oh. bunk. Yeah. So she, she just seemed like a very fun person yeah like she really enjoyed <laughs> she really job. got into it yeah i'm sure she was great at it so let's go through a couple of examples of her her okay. shenanigans all right let's do it so in chicago one time chicago. she dresses as a widow named rosalind richards rosalind richards and she visits a prominent spiritualist named herman parker herman herman good old herm Good name. So, he is such a good medium that he connects with her dead husband. It's amazing because not only is he dead, he's fake dead. Yeah, he's fake altogether. Yeah, so yeah. he connects with the, the fake dead husband. <laughs> okay. And so Rose, you know, asks a bunch of things and is grieving and crying and goes through the whole rigmarole. But then she decides she's going to ask her dead fake husband what she should do with this super big settlement from his death. Mm, smart. Yeah. And so Parker, good old Herman, he advised that she invest in a company, a very specific company called the Wilcox Transportation Company. Mm. It's owned by his business partner. Convenient? Could very convenient. I think not. <laughs> yeah. So. Or I think yes. She says perfect. And then she goes and turns him in and he goes to jail. Who goes to jail? Herman Barger. For goes fraud. For fraud. So she exposes this whole big. Wow. I feel like people are going to be out for her. Like wanting to. I'm sure there were plenty of people who didn't love her. her. <laughs> well, I mean, literally like kill her. Yeah. Luckily there was no internet. True. So you can just kind of disappear into the shadows. Oof. Dang. And I guess you're under an alias, right? Like, yeah. It, yeah. So um, there's another time in Indianapolis where Rose pretended to be a, a mother who had just lost her infant. Oh. And a spiritualist by the name of Charles Gonzalez, but not like the Hispanic spelling of Gonzalez, like G U N S O L A S, Gonzalez. And I don't know what, if it's Italian, I don't know. Mm, yeah. But he was also very kind and offered uh, to communicate with her infant son or child uh, via a bowl of water. <laughs> you don't say. That was his. What does that even, okay. I'm not sure. He talked to the bowl of water and <laughs> talks back. I don't know. For a mere $25, which back then was a couple hundred dollars. That's a lot. Yeah. He also encouraged her to, um, that he, she could improve the communication if she would get naked. He said this? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Does she get naked? No. Oh. <laughs> I was like, she is really taking this to the new level. Yeah. I mean, maybe she did, but it'd I doubt it. It'd be really funny. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, okay. And then just sees where it goes from there. Yeah. Let's see what her, her dead child tells her while she's naked any 
I don't want to say anything mean. Anyone that is going to go along with this has to be in a state of like... You're like, deserves to get their money taken. Well... That's what you're saying. No, no. Has <laughs> to be. I mean, obviously not thinking clearly. If you sure. really think that getting naked... But I'm sure there I'm are Talking to a bowl of water? Right. I'm sure there are people out there that are like so... I'm sure there are. So Listen. lost, you know, with the situation that they find themselves in. That they would do it and not even really <laughs> think of the absurdity of it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, I think Puff Daddy would do it. Okay. Don't even. Maybe that's what it does. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, a few weeks later... Mm -hmm. Six weeks later, guess who shows up in Indianapolis to do a show? Oh, Houdini. Harry Houdini. Yeah. And guess who is in the audience of Houdini's show? Um, Gonzo Gonzolas. That's right. And guess what Harry Houdini does? Takes off his gloves? No. Says to take off your gloves. Well, he Copies. calls them out oh. and he tells everybody this is what he does. And, uh... Good old Gonzalez got booed all the way out of the stadium. Really? Yeah, for the auditorium. It would have been funny to almost like play his same trick on him. That would have been funny. Like call him up on stage. Be like this is the way it works, man. <laughs> this is the way it works. You gotta get <laughs> naked and then just if you want to and talk then to him, call man. him out right then. I think that would have been hysterical. That would have been good. <laughs> Maybe that's what he did. Maybe. So um, sometimes, so you'd have these. Oftentimes the medium would be in the audience of Houdini shows. How would he know that they were there? That's a good question. Because sure I mean like the technology it. nowadays, I think it, that's actually kind of a big job. To... But I don't know if he was just because he was such a giant star that maybe he wouldn't know they were there, but maybe he would just Oh a s or... maybe he would get there and like praise them like, oh you guys have a wonderful medium here in Indianapolis. Whatever Gonzalez, you know and is he here tonight? And he, mm. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm awesome. Here I am. Gotcha. Maybe it was something like that. Maybe he would send special tickets ahead of time. Mm. I don't know. To, like, bait him into yeah. coming? Okay. Anyway. Maybe he would use their hubris to be like, hey, if you want to see what a real medium looks like, <laughs> come to my show. <laughs> but he's not really a medium. Magician, whatever, yeah. Yeah. So okay. I don't know how he got him there. Um, but oftentimes, he would call out the medium. The medium would deny it. Or say, like, she was never in my seance. And so the crowd would turn to Rose, who was there, and want proof that she was there. So she had this special little thing she would do. Mm. Because what are her seance rooms like most of the time? Dark. They're dark. Mm. So she would draw, with a green crayon, a star somewhere in the room in the dark. Wow. And then, I mean, this is how the world worked back then. People would get up. And they would leave and they would go like to the place of the medium, like right then and there, <laughs> the wow. crowd. And she could go in and say, look, there's my star right there on the wallpaper. Oh, or there's wow. my star. <laughs> That's and, impressive. Yeah. So um, it was pretty, pretty wild. It's very well thought. Yeah. Like the process is very well thought They're through. They're professionals. Professional bunkers. Debunkers. Debunkers. Mm -hmm. But not deep pantsers. Deep pantsing is not just pantsing. <laughs> but it's debunking. It's so D it, is to, to undo, me. except for pants. But what is bunking? If just you just say bunking. That's a good question too. It's like a double negative. Exactly. That's why it should just be bunking. <laughs> mm. What about deep writing? Deep writing. Mm. Well, writing is not really anything, is it? I don't know. I mean, it, what about it's... de-icing? You're removing ice? Yeah. We're taking a tangent here, people. <laughs> <laughs> follow us, follow us down. <laughs> okay. English language. Back on track. Well, this has been a an ongoing conversation since true. we were married, I think. So. I believe so. Anyway. <laughs> so, we're going to now talk about a very specific case that Houdini and Rose worked on together. Okay. <clears throat> a gal by the name of Mina Crandon, a.k.a. Marjorie the Medium. Which is kind of a lame name. Marjorie the Medium and Mina? 
Yeah, is obviously. Is Mina short for Marjorie? No, I believe that's just like a stage name. Okay, that makes more sense to me then. Yeah. All yeah. right. So, um, Marjorie. Marjorie the medium. Marjorie the medium was a unique medium because she was 36 years old. She lived in Boston. She was insanely popular. And I think one of the reasons why she was insanely popular is because she was extremely attractive and wore pretty much nothing during her seances. It's a good way to get yourself popular. Yeah. Yeah. She mm -hmm. wore a very flimsy, thin, kind of see-through dressing gown and slippers and silk stockings. Now, the point of doing that was to show there's no deception here. Ah. I'm not hiding anything, including my body. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I like and it. She was married to a very prominent surgeon who had a lot of money already. But uh, she was quite popular for some reason. Her seances. Some curious were reason. <laughs> the best around in the Boston area. Sure, okay. Now, Marjorie claimed to have psychic abilities that allowed her to communicate with spirits of the deceased. And she could produce quite a few different physical manifestations, including voices, apparitions, movements of objects. Ooh. And uh, she was very big into table tipping. So not just the knocking, but the table actually moving. Mm. Um, it's like that one that Nick does with the flying, yeah. bouncing table. Nick is the magician at our amusement park. Oh, yeah. Yeah, We're on a know. first name so, basis. He has this trick. I've seen it how many times have I seen oh. it? 25 times. Yeah. I still <laughs> He's got this little podium. Table. Little table. Mm -hmm. And he puts this cloth. cloth on top of it. And then he holds the edges of the cloth mm -hmm. and the whole table floats off the ground. And he can bounce and he it and walks it around. Move. He can put it on people's heads. He'll wave his hands above it, like to make sure there's no strings. Our daughter has even done it with him Held the other she end. holds one side mm -hmm. and he holds one side and they fly it around together okay explain that I everybody i don't understand <laughs> that's what I'm where's saying. houdini when i need him I know. And i'm sitting there five feet away watching it and, and like, i can't figure it out like but he the cloth is like very not Loose. glued on there yeah. it's, well he puts it on yeah he takes it off yeah so then i'm like is there some sort of remote in the cloth that's like magnetic <laughs> and the top of the table. I mean, literally my brain is like, how did he do this? Maybe it's this, maybe it's that. It's just how my brain works. It's just magic. I think I'm, he's I'm, a wizard. Well, he's a magician. He's a warlock. Okay, go back to this lady. We are so all over the map. Okay, M Mina, Marjorie the Naked Lady. Marjorie the Naked. <laughs> could tip tables. <laughs> she. Oh, table to, oh, apparitions. Yeah. That That's like um seeing the future? No, it's like no. seeing ghosts. Like seeing oh, like physical, physical form manifestations of, of what's what am I thinking of? Apparitions. No, um, I don't know. I don't know either. What word I was thinking of that might be similar, but meaning. Hmm. Anyway, uh, she was really good at producing spirit voices, so that people could hear. Um, like ventriloquist style, kind of like different types of voices. I'm not saying she was a ventriloquist. No, but I mean... But yes, she was a ventriloquist. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like yes. different... Hearing ways. voices from the corners of the room or under the table mm. or... Yeah. The spirits would speak. Of course. Okay. Um, she could even do ectoplasm manifestations. So some mediums were so medium-y that they could produce ectoplasm a physical goop from the other side wow i think that's where ghostbusters got it from so is it like phlegm from her throat or what is ecto it's ghost phlegm yeah no but i mean what is she what is it really that I don't she's know. claiming it to be so the at the side? time that houdini saw her she actually was not doing the ectoplasm thing yet. Mm, darn it. Or the apparitions. This came later in her career. Of course. Where she became a better medium. Even after he threw her under the bus? Well, we'll get to that. Okay. I mean, you I'm find that naked mediums a powerful, powerful form of magic. <laughs> <laughs> I 
don't we all know? So, um, so normally Marjorie, the medium, worked with bereaved people, sad people, mm -hmm. people who were looking for um, comfort. Right. But there was a special seance that she got both Houdini and Rose to attend, not in costume, not hiding. She knew they were coming. And she, she was, knew who they were. Mm -hmm, and she was thrilled to get to do her thing for them mm -hmm. and convince such an amazing team as Houdini and Rose of her awesomeness. Okay. So during the seance, when Houdini and Rose were there, um, a spirit bell rang, which is like this little box with a bell with a button on it. And if you push it, it rings. But the spirits could come and push it. Mm, so no one else pushed it? No, the spirits pushed it, I think. The spirit box. Okay. Not a person box. Jeez. 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 <laughs> your dang case of idiot, Tina. <laughs> okay. Spirit box. A voice called to Houdini in the darkness. Ooh. And a megaphone crashed at the floor to the floor at his feet. That like fell from the sky? Yes. Wow. A ghost megaphone. <laughs> this is getting weirder. Well, maybe it wasn't a ghost, but it was a normal megaphone thrown by a ghost. Absolutely. At Houdini. Okay. So the question is, why was Houdini open to seeing Marjorie in person instead of their usual sneaky ways? Because she asked them to. I think you wanted to see her performing outfit. <laughs> no, she was a huge, huge, huge deal. Like, very popular, very famous. Um, and one of the spirits that she conjured was her older brother, Walter, who had died about a decade before in a train accident. He was crushed. Ooh, sad. Yes. He was not a very pleasant spirit. Why not? Well, some people are just not pleasant spirits. Okay. And so, oftentimes, Walter would come through, and he would say such obscene things that the 1920s Bostonians were like, there's no way this cute little girl could say these things. Like, it's just not something a woman would say. Hmm. And so it was obvious proof. That is definitely obvious proof. That, that it was it... really Walter, the ghost. <laughs> that it was really her brother. <gasps> yeah. Oh. But sometimes the voice of Walter would come from other parts of the room when Marjorie was in a trance. Mm -hmm. Sometimes her mouth would even be full of water and the voice would still come. Is it like a recording from a speaker? There's no recordings. Okay. I don't know. No, I think it's, she's just really good at what she does. Okay. Kind of like how I can't figure out how Nick flies a table around. He's just good at it. He's just really good at it. Gotcha. The table's not actually flying around. No, it really is. Well, it is, but <laughs> there's some normal explanation. Oh, to for it. sure. Um, but she had become such a huge deal that she had convinced some very prominent people that she was genuine. One of these people was Who Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Arthur? Arthur Conan Doyle. Arthur Conan. You've probably Should heard I know that who... name. Uh, so he is the writer of Sherlock Holmes. That it is. And he was a big proponent of spiritualism. He thought spiritualism was like the bees, knees, the biggest thing that had ever happened, and that everything else in the world was going to fail in comparison to, to spiritualism. spiritualism. Okay. Got it. And literature, I guess, because he wrote good books. Mm -hmm. Very um, good stories. So, Conan Doyle was such a huge deal, and he had so much faith in Marjorie, the medium, that... He att attracted the attention of a magazine called the Scientific American. Mm. So in December 1922, the magazine launched an investigation into the paranormal. With a cash prize of $2,500 to the first person who could produce a psychic photograph under the magazine's test conditions. Or $2,500 to the first person who could produce a visible psychic manifestation or a ghost, in other words. Okay. To the satisfaction of their judges. Who are the... Oh, is Houdini a judge? So who are the judges? Houdini. So Houdini was the first one to say, Oh, I will be a judge. 
Okay, and was Rose a judge? Or so I don't know if Houdini was the only judge, or if it was like him and his team were judges, oh, or how I it see. worked exactly. Okay. Um, and so that's why Houdini was interested in her. I get it. But <laughs> but it wasn't all done uh, above the table, shall we say? Okay. So, so Houdini what's happening wasn't under the table. Well, metaphorically. Right. So <laughs> Houdini was not notified by Scientific American that they had begun their investigation into Marjorie the medium mm. for three months. And they were about to award her the prize when Houdini first found out that they had even been doing it. Mm. And he's like, whoa, whoa, hold on. I'm one of the judges. I've never even seen this lady. And so not only was that going on, but the local Boston papers had caught word that they were about to give her this prize. I, but I don't understand how they could give him this prize without him judging. Well, apparently the other judges had oh. had uh, seen enough. And they, okay. they were like, oh, this is, this is genuine. Um, one of the headlines was Houdini the Magician stumped. I mean, Houdini didn't like that. He's like, I've never even seen this girl. Well, yeah, I wouldn't like that either. That's like every Inquirer magazine out there. Yeah. So he did yeah. find out that some of the other judges, when they would go to watch her, would stay at their house. Stay at whose house? The Cranston's house. Cranston's, I don't know what I'm saying. Marjorie's house. Marjorie's house. Uh, some of them even took out loans with her very wealthy husband for other business ventures. Some of the older guys were very keen on her looks. So Houdini was very quick to say, like, mm, I think everyone else is kind of got ulterior motives here. Yeah, there's a lot of other, yeah, it should yeah. be very neutral judging. Yeah. So he's like, I need to go and witness this. Okay. And so that's why he shows up with Rose, totally to unabated, not disguised. Right. Show me your stuff. Not literally show me your stuff, but your seance stuff. <laughs> your medium stuff. Your okay. medium ship. Uh, he even tells the Scientific American that if I can't figure this out, I will donate a thousand dollars of my own money for this prize. Okay. Because he's like, I'm so convinced that this is crap. Right. But it's kind of cool because he goes, she does all these things. The spirit box does ring lots. Um, there are voices. There are, and he even sets up some stuff. So normally the spirit box sits between her feet on the floor which seems like a pretty easy way to like my face if you're not watching i'm just like what that yeah. just seems like any now the way the seance works everyone holds hands so it can't be your hands and everyone's feet are touching everyone's feet are touching like in the circle under the table oh, like, see like how i'm touching your footsies? feet yeah to make sure that she's not touching the bell oh but she's sly enough that she if she's not a real medium she can still move her just foot just enough one some way to ring that bell. Okay, interesting. But this is how cool Houdini was. So one of the like, he knew what she did prior to going, right? Okay. Like what kind of things yeah, yeah. happened in her seances. So that day, so the seance was at night. So in the morning, he wrapped a rubber band around just below his knee. Super tight. He wore it all day. So essentially, it was almost like a tourniquet but on why? his leg. Well, by the time the seance came around, his leg was super swollen and it hurt. And so he was super um, more, what's the word I'm looking for? Aware of his Aware foot. of anything touching his leg. Uh -huh. And so he wanted his leg by her to be like that so that he could feel even better her movements. This is some dedication. Yeah. But this is why he's the greatest escape artist of all time. Like these things that no one else would even think of, right? Not at all. Not even a little bit. Like these little tricks and, you know. Yeah, let's almost amputate my leg. Yeah, just so I can prove this lady <laughs> so wrong. Prove this lady wrong. Perfect. And so he does come up with answers to all of her things. Okay. His, uh, at least his explanations, mm -hmm. you know. So he says she's still slightly moving, you know, to get the bell. The voice is kind of something ventriloquisty. He thinks that the megaphone in the dark, her husband would set on her head. 
and then she could throw her head and make it go wherever she needed it to go. Oh. Something like that. Interesting. So they end up going through a whole bunch of other... He actually builds a box that he makes her be in to do the seances. He builds her <laughs> yeah. box. And her husband and him get almost like into fist fights over everything. Ooh, this Long story great. short, she doesn't win the money. But she does become extremely popular more and more and more throughout her life. You know, like Even it doesn't with stop Houdini's, her. Even with it yeah. doesn't stop her. Okay. And then she does go on to do the ectoplasm thing and blah, blah, blah. I wonder what that was made out of. I don't know. It would be, it was really tricky though. Side note, someone just, one of her friends talking about, like her success was also her downfall. Not her downfall, but it was the hardest part because people would show up and they would want something bigger and better. So she mm. had to figure out some bigger and better manifestation. And then on top of that, some bigger and better manifestation. You know, it was like this never ending cycle of becoming a better medium of course talking to the dead even better yeah but we all know that being naked like fully naked helps with Not communication oh that's true well from at least in indianapolis yeah yeah so i'm midwest, wondering if she went that way in the midwest you want to be fully naked in new england it's better to be like barely clothed yeah like see-through satin yeah. white satin yeah yeah in the west you could wear whatever yeah out here, the ghosts don't care so much. They're not as perverted. <laughs> they're all about the outdoors. Yeah, they don't even show up. <laughs> they they're don't even show up. Which I don't blame them. Yeah, you me either. <laughs> so, um, but that's what Rose and Houdini did together. Yeah, that's and in cool. total, the two of them um, exposed over three hundred fraud mediums. That's in crazy. Their time together. That's a lot. In 1926, okay, this is kind of Rose's big claim to fame. So Houdini's still alive because he dies young, kind of unexpectedly. So this is five months before he dies. Um, Do we know what he dies from? It's it's weird. He got so one thing. I'm not a Houdini expert, so if you're listening to this and you're like, "That's not right at all," Mike. Okay, I'm sorry. It's not right at all. But one of the things he would do is. He could get, he would tell, he could get punched in the stomach by anybody, like as hard as he could, and it would hurt. Ugh, that sounds. And so a med terrible. student shows up at his house, asks if this is true, starts punching him like crazy. He dies like a day later, something like that. It's weirdness. I should investigate it more. Maybe we'll do a story on it. That is strange. Yeah. Okay. Anywho, so it wasn't like cancer or anything. Yeah, just like from his job. Yeah. Potentially. Okay. But then I thought maybe I read once appendicitis, which obviously well, maybe like he being wasn't punched. in Antarctica, cutting out his own appendix, Ugh. which would have been better. Okay, okay. So, sorry. Roses, so, <clears throat> 1926. In Washington, D.C., it was legal to be a medium, essentially. It was illegal? It was legal. It you could actually get licensed to be like... In all these other places, was it legal and they were just It wasn't practicing? illegal, but it wasn't like... Like, like something you can actually get a I, permit. Right, I get what right. you're saying. Okay. I have a dental license from the state of Washington. I get that. I could get like a medium license. Hmm. And like be official. An actual, where is this again? In D.C. D.C. Go D.C. And so Houdini was obviously really anti all of this crap. Mm -hmm. And so he and a couple of congressmen sponsored a bill that would make it illegal, essentially, to do this in Washington. Okay. And so they had to testify in front of Congress okay. the pros and cons. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mackenberg herself, Rose herself, said the following. Although the days were filled with near riots, a welter of conflicting testimony, shouted objections, muttered oaths, and copious tears. Okay. Um, Houdini would get up while testifying and do tricks and show the senators and show the representatives, how it was done. He even offered $10,000 to any spiritualist who could prove that their stuff was genuine right there and, and there. Now, here's another thing I, I failed to mention earlier. Both Houdini and Rose, mm -hmm. this whole time, were more than welcome or more than happy to admit if someone was legit. They had no problem with the idea of talking with the dead. 
Oh, interesting. If someone proved genuine, they would have been the first to say, that is amazing, this is awesome. But they were super anti-charlatans. Gotcha. And um, at one day, the fighting got so bad in Congress that they actually had to adjourn for the day. Wow. And so all this is going on, but then the biggest bombshell of all was Rose's testimony. Mm -hmm. So she was called to testify. And prior to the hearings, what did Houdini do? He sent Rose undercover mm -hmm. to Washington, D.C. to visit all of the prominent um, mediums mm -hmm. and gather evidence to use against him. Right. So while she's on stand, she testifies that two different spiritualists had told her that a number of U.S. senators were their clients. And she even goes on to name these U.S. senators who are using seances to help govern the country. Oh. And this is, like, explosive. That is explosive, actually. Yeah. She also, most shockingly of all, tells them that one medium, a lady by the name of Jane Coates, had boasted to her that she had held numerous seances in the White House with the president. Oof. And dang. so this became, like, you know, front page news, news and mm -hmm. all this kind of stuff. So um, she became a very, mm, what's the word, prominent lady for a few weeks there during her testimony. Yeah, for sure. Um, the bill, the bill did fail, though. It did not pass. And like I said, uh, Houdini died just five months later. Mm. And Rose was now left alone. I'm sure she was devastated. Yeah. A job-ish, kind of. So Rose was one of the few people that Houdini had given a special code to that if he were to die, he would try to come back and communicate this code. Oh. Just kind of shows how close they really were. His wife was one. Rose was one. There were a few. Mm. That he, Did they uh, ever get the code? She had, in the 1950s, in an interview, she said she'd never heard from Houdini in all those years. Yeah. So in 30 years, she hadn't heard from him yet. And so. Pretty sure she won't <laughs> at that point. But uh, she did go on to become, uh, she continued to debunk fake mediums for the next 30 years. Good for her. Yeah. Uh, she investigated cases on behalf of banks, uh, police departments, lawyers, district attorneys, insurance companies, trust companies. Wow. Um, private citizens. She became kind of the expert on fraudulent mediumship. Uh, she wrote newspapers, she wrote magazine articles, she became a lecturer. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and she appeared on radio, TV shows. Yeah, like, for she sure. She was just the awesomest. It is funny, when she retired, she very specifically got herself an apartment that was super full of windows. Because she claimed she was very sick of spending her life in dark and shadowy mm. rooms and that makes corners. sense that makes sense because her job was focused on yeah. you know being in those places i would do the same thing yeah, yeah. it's a good way to so, retire um she passed away in 1968 and 75 mm -hmm. 1968 and, and 75 at age 75 oh, okay. <laughs> okay, and she had investigated more than 1500 mediums wow so 300 when her and houdini when she houdini just, died so she's done it 12, so four times as much on her own. You go, girl. All because, uh, you know, all because Houdini was so impressed with her. Yeah. He taught her all the tricks. Yeah. Of those 1,500, she says she never once found one that she believed. But she would be the first to happily admit. That if there was that one. there was one. Felt, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So I really do want to go learn more about just Houdini now. Yeah. But all I have really, I just know vague stories about being a skate artist and stuff. Right. But I'm actually curious what they considered his death to be from. I mean, even if it was a side effect of being punched in the stomach, how do you even get to the point in your profession that this is something you want to claim? <laughs> I mean, I'm like, that just seems dumb. And like I said, I, I'm no expert. Maybe I'm mixing up some stuff. Well, but something along those lines. Along those lines. Well, I mean, there are people that claim the unthinkable, you know, like the knives going in fire and whatever well, so this is the same guy who would like get handcuffed in a straight jacket yeah and thrown it off of a bridge yeah which 
you need to do more research. I mean, I just, <laughs> it bothers me. And I couldn't do the research, but if you, it would bother me. I don't know. I think it's pretty straightforward. I don't think it would be like disturbing. I think the concept for me is like, is it really real? Is it not really real? And if it is really real, you really could have died. And it's just kind of like this cycle of, that's kind of stupid. Like the whole thing about punching yourself in something. That's right. really the truth. I'm like, this is kind of like you're missing. There was a you know, famous, I mean, nowhere near Houdini famous, but uh, escape artist who killed himself. Trying to escape? Uh-huh. He got he... buried alive under concrete in like a glass coffin and the coffin broke under the weight of the concrete. Oh, that's such a bad and idea. I couldn't get him out in time. Oh, that's terrible. It's like in the late 90s, I think. It's on YouTube. You can watch the whole thing. Mm. Like you see the concrete pouring and then you can tell when the, the glass just gives out. The whole thing just like this big void of the concrete. Because it's liquid, right? Like, oh, for sure. Just drops like a big bubble. Mm. I want nothing to do. See, that's what I'm saying is it's like, I kind of feel like you, you've got a few screws loose. That is true. You know, like, hey, let's, I don't know why, but I'm just, yeah. no, and so I, I, it's I like disturbing it to me, right? Like in many ways it's disturbing. It's incredible that he could get himself out, but is it really real or is that magic in and of itself? Like is he, is it really not tied straight jacket? I mean, who knows? I don't know. Yeah, I don't either. So. I have to go do some Houdini reading. Yeah. You're so much better at that than me. Reading? <laughs> <laughs> Thank okay. you. Reading creepy, like macabre, weird well, sort of stuff like that's stuff. bothersome to me. And I don't know. Yeah. I, I just, anyway. <laughs> Well, that was very interesting. Yeah. She seems like a really cool lady. She's spunky. So you guys, there are lots of cool women all the way back in time. All the way back in time. Even a hundred years ago. No, but I mean like, even in... Biblical times. There's lots of really awesome women out there. It's I'm just sure really cool. There's as many amazing women as there are men. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I just feel like sometimes there's this whole, you know, stigma. And obviously there were things that needed to change. I'm just saying there were still, they were there. You probably just didn't hear about them near as much or something. Yeah, I'm sure there's tons of cool stories of women yeah. who did huge things and just never got right. the credit or yeah. the publicity. Right. Because it just... Because it just wasn't, how, wasn't the how the world worked then. So anyway, I just think that's pretty well, awesome. Me, you are the star of the show. So thank you. <laughs> no, I think you're the star because we wouldn't have the show without you. <laughs> that's true. But all would listen if you weren't doing it. So. Oh, well. <laughs> um, Alrighty. Well, it is late here and I want to go for a run still. So yeah, kudos to you. It's beautiful out. So it's beautiful out. All right. So let's get the heck out of here. Okay, sounds good. We will be back next week. Please, if you're listening, go over and search Strangest Species podcast on YouTube. Give us a thumbs up. Watch it. It really help. You don't have to do it all the time. Just enough that it gets some traffic going. Yeah. And then other people can find it. It's true. So thank you. We're not trying to make any money or anything. We just want people to listen. <laughs> so all right, everybody. Have a all wonderful right. week. See we'll you talk later. To you next week. Bye.